A lot of YouTubers have already read the B-movie script back in 2016. But I recently made a video talking about how much I love the B-movie. So here I am reading the entire B-movie script. Enjoy! According to all known laws of aviation, there's no way that a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway. Because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. Yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black. Ooh, black and yellow. Yeah, let's shake it up a little. Barry, breakfast is ready. Coming. Oh, hang on a second. Hello? Barry? Adam? Can you believe this is happening? I can't believe it. I'll pick you up. Looking sharp. Barry, why don't you use the stairs? Your father paid good money for those. Sorry, I'm excited. Here's the graduate. We're very proud of you, son. And a perfect report card. All bees. Very proud. Ma, I got a thing going on here. Ah, you got some lint on your fuzz. Ow, that's me. Wave to us. We'll be in row 118,000. Bye. Barry, I told you. Stop flying in the house. Hey, Adam. Hey, Barry. Is that fuzz gel? Hello. It's a special day. Finally graduating. Never thought I'd make it. Yeah, three days grade school, three days of high school. Those are so awkward. Three days college. I'm glad I took off one day in the middle and just hitchhiked around the hive. You did come back different. Hi, Barry. Hi, hey, Artie. Growing a mustache. Looks good. Hey, did you hear about Frankie? Yeah. You going to his funeral? No, I'm not going to his funeral. Everybody knows you sting someone, you die. You don't waste it on a squirrel. He was such a hothead. Yeah, I guess he could have just gotten out of the way. Whoa. I love this incorporate. I love this incorporating an amusement park right into our regular day. I guess that's why they say we don't need a vacation. Boy, quite a bit of pomp under the circumstances. Well, Adam, today we are men. Well, Adam, today we are men. We are. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Ah! Students, faculty, distinguished bees, please welcome Dean Buswell. Welcome, new Hive City graduating class of 915. And that concludes our graduation ceremonies. And begins your career at Hunnex Industries. Are we, gonna, are we gonna pick our jobs today? I heard it's just orientation. Huh? Whoa, heads up, here we go. Keep your hands and antennas inside the tram at all times. Mantenga sus manos y antenas dentro del tranvía en todo momento. Wonder what it's going to be like. A little scary. <laughs> Welcome to Hanex, a division of Hanesco and a part of the Hexagon Group. This is it. Wow. We know that you as a bee have worked your whole life to get to the point where you can work for your whole life. Honey begins when our valiant pollen jocks bring the nectar to the hive. Our top secret formula is automatically color coded, color corrected, scent adjusted, and bubble contoured into this soothing sweet syrup with its distinctive golden glow. You all know as Honey. That girl was hot. She's my cousin. She is? Yes, we're all cousins. Right, you're right. At Hanex, we also constantly strive to improve every aspect of bee existence. These bees are stress testing a new helmet technology. Ooh, what do you think he makes? Not enough. And here we have our latest advancement, the Krellman. Wow, what does that do? Catches that little strand of honey that hangs after you pour it. Saves us millions. Uh, can anyone work on the Krellman? Of course. Most bee jobs are small ones. But bees know that every small job, if it's well done, means a lot. But choose carefully, because you'll stay in the job that you pick for the rest of your life. The same job the rest of your life? I didn't know that. What's the difference? Huh? And you'll be happy to know that bees, as a species, haven't had one day off in 27 million years. So you'll just work us to death? We'll sure try! Uh, wow, that blew my mind. What's the difference, Adam? How could you say that? One job forever? That's an insane choice to have to make. Well, I'm relieved. Now we only have to make one decision in life. But Adam, how could, have, how could they never have told us that? Barry, why would you question anything? 
anything. We're bees. We're the most perfectly functioning society on earth. Yeah, but Adam, did you ever think that maybe things work a little too well around here? Like what? Give me one example. I don't know, but you know what I'm talking about. Please clear the gate. The great. Please clear the gate. Royal Nectar Force on approach. Royal Nectar Force on approach. Wait a second. Check it out. Hey, those are pollen jocks. Wow. I've never seen them this close. They know what it's like to go outside the hive. Yeah, but some of them don't come back. Hey, jocks. Hi, jocks. You guys did great. You're monsters. You're sky freaks. I love it. I love it. I wonder where those guys have just been. I don't know. Their day is not planned. Outside the hive flying who knows where doing who knows what. You can't just decide one day to be a pollen job. You have to be bred for that. Right. Look at that. That's more pollen than you and I will ever see in a lifetime. It's just a status symbol. I think bees make too big of a deal out of it. Perhaps, unless you're wearing it and the ladies see you wearing it. Those ladies? Aren't they our cousins too? Distant, distant. Look at those two. Couple of hive harries. Let's have some fun with them. It must be so dangerous being a pollen jock. Oh yeah, one time a bear had me pinned up against a mushroom. He had one paw on my throat and with the other, he was slapping me back and forth across the face. Oh my. I never thought I'd knock him out. And what were you doing all, doing all of this? Obviously, I was trying to alert the authorities. I can autograph that if you want. A little gusty out there today, wasn't it, comrades? Yeah, gusty. Yeah, we're gonna hit a sunflower patch about six miles from here tomorrow. Six miles, huh? Barry. It's a bottle jump for us, but uh, maybe you're not up for it. Maybe I am. You are not. We're going 0900 at J-Gate. Whoa. What do you think, Buzzy Boy? Are you B enough? I might be. It all depends on what 0900 means. Hey, Hunnix. Oh, Dad, you surprised me. Have you decided what you're interested in, son? Well, there's a lot of choices, but you only get one. Dad, do you ever get bored doing the same job every day? Son, let me tell you about stirring. You grab that stick and you just move it around and you stir it around. You get yourself into a rhythm. It's a beautiful thing. You know, Dad, the more I think about it, maybe the honey field just isn't right for me. And you were thinking, oh, and you were thinking of what? Making balloon animals? That's a bad job for a guy with a stinger. Well, no. Janet, your son's not sure. He wants to go into honey. Oh, Barry, you are so funny sometimes. I'm not trying to be funny. You're not funny. You're going into honey. Our son, the stir. You're gonna be a stir? No one's listening to me. Wait till you see the sticks I have for you. I could say anything I want right now. I'm gonna get an ant tattoo. Oh, let's open some fresh honey and celebrate. Maybe I'll pierce my thorax. Shave my antenna. Shack, shack, shack up with a grasshopper. Get a gold tooth and start calling everybody dog. <laughs> I can't believe we're starting work today. Today's the day. Come on, all the good. Come on, all the good jobs will be gone. Yeah, right. Pollen counting, stunt bee pouring, stir, front desk hair removal. Is it still available? Hang on, two left and one of them's yours. Congratulations, son. Step to the side, please. Yeah. What you get? Picking the crud out. Whoa. That is stellar. Wow. Couple of newbies. Yes, sir. Our first day. And we are ready. Well, step up and make your choice. Do you want to go first? Uh, no, you go. Oh, my. What's available? Restroom. Restroom attendants always open. And not for the reason you think. Any chances? Uh, any chance of getting onto the Krellman, sir? Sure, you're on. Oh, I'm sorry. The Krellman just closed out. Oh. Wax monkeys, <laughs> Wax monkeys always open, and the Quellman just opened up again. What happened? Well, whenever a bee, well, whenever a bee dies, that's an opening. See that? He's dead, dead, another dead one, deadly, deadified, two more dead, dead from the neck up, dead from the neck down. But that's life. Oh, this is so hard. Heating, cooling, stunt be poor, stir, humming, inspector number seven, link coordinator, stripe, supervisor, antenna ball, pol antenna ball polisher, mic wrangler. Barry, what do you think I... Barry, what do you think I should? Barry? Barry! Alright, we got the sunflower patch in quadrant 9. Geranium window box on sudden place. 
What happened to you? Where are you? I'm going out. Out? Out where? Out there. Oh no. I have to... Our, ta our table. I have to... I have to before I go to work for the rest of my life. You're gonna die. You're crazy. Hello? Oh, another call coming in. You're crazy. If anyone's feeling brave, there's a Korean deli on 83rd that gets their roses today. Hey guys. Well, look at that. Isn't that the kid we saw yesterday? Hold it, son. Flight deck's restricted. It's okay, Lou. We're gonna take him up. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> really? Feeling lucky, are you? Sign here. Here. Just initial that. Thank you. Okay, you got a rain advisory today, and as you all know, bees cannot fly in rain. So be careful. As always, watch your brooms, hockey sticks, dogs, birds, bear bears, and bats. Also, I got a couple of reports of root beer being poured on us. Murphy's in a home because of it, just babbling like a cicada. That's awful. And a reminder for all you rookies, be law number one. Absolutely no talking to humans. All right, lunch positions. Buzz, 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 buzz. Black and yellow. Hello. You ready for this hot shot? Yeah, yeah, bring it on. Wind, check. Antenna, check. Nectar pack, check. Wings, check. Stinger, check. Scared out of my shorts, check. Okay, ladies, let's move it out. Pound those petunias, you stripe the stripe stem suckers. All of you, drain those flowers. Wow, I'm out. I can't believe I'm out. So blue. Whoa! I feel so fast and free. Box kite. Wow. Whoa! Flowers. This is blue leader. We have roses visual. Bring it around 30 degrees and hold. Roses. 30 degrees, Roger. Bring it around. Stand to the side, kid. It's got a bit of a kick. Oh, that is one nectar collector. You ever see pollination up close? No, sir. I pick up some pollen here, sprinkle it all over there, maybe a dash over, the, maybe a dash over there, a pinch on that one. See that? It's a little bit of magic, ain't it? Wow, that's amazing. Why do we do that? That's pollen power, kid. More pollen, more flowers, more nectar, more honey for us. Cool. I'm picking up a lot of bright yellow. Could be daisies. Don't we need those? Copy that, visual. Hold on, one of those flowers seems to be on the move. Say again, are you reporting a moving flower? Affirmative. This is the coolest. What is it? I don't know, but I'm loving this color. Ah, it smells good. Not like a flower, but I like it. Yeah, fuzzy, chemically. Careful guys, it's a little grabby. My sweet lord of peace. Hey, Candy Brain, get off there. Uh, problem. Guys, this could be bad. Affirmative. Very close. Gonna hurt. Mama's little boy. You are way out of, you are way out of position, rookie. Coming in at you like a missile. Help me! You know, I don't think these are flowers. Should we tell him? I think he knows. What is this? Match point. You can just start packing up, honey, because I believe you're about to eat it. <clears throat> what? Oh no. Oh, you can't be serious. Yowzer! Ew, gross. There's a bee in the car! Ah! <laughs> Do something! I'm driving. Hi, bee. He's back here. He's going to sting me. Nobody move. If you don't move, he won't sting you. Freeze. He blinked. Spray him, Granny. What are you doing? Wow, the tension level out here is unbelievable. I gotta get home. Whoa. Can't fly in rain. Can't fly in rain. Can't fly in rain. Mayday. Mayday. Be going down. Okay. Ken, could you close the window, please? Huh? Oh, hey. Check out my new resume. I made it into a fold-out brochure. You see? Folds out. Oh, no. More humans. I don't need this. Oof! 
Ow! What was that? Maybe this time. This time, this time, this time, this time, this time, this, this, this. <laughs> Grapes! That is diabolical. It's fantastic. It's got all my special skills. Even my top 10 favorite movies. What's your number one? Star Wars? Nah, I don't go for that. Pew, 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 pew. Kind of stuff. No wonder we're not supposed to talk to them. They're out of their minds. When I walk out of a job interview, they're flabbergasted. They can't, eat, can, they can't believe the things I say. There's the sun. Maybe that's a way out. I don't remember the sun having a big six, big 75 on it. Then he hits the light bulb. I gotta tell you, I predicted, glo <laughs> I predicted global warming. I could feel it getting hotter. At first, I thought it was just me. Wait, Wait stop. stop. B. Kill it, kill it. Stand back. These are winter boots. Wait, don't kill him. You know I'm allergic to them. This thing could kill me. Well, why does his life have any less value than yours? Why does his life have any less value than mine? Is that your statement? I'm just saying all life has value. You don't know what he's capable of feeling. My brochure. There you go, little guy. I'm not scared of him, but yeah, it's an allergic thing. Hey, why don't you put that on your resume brochure? It's not funny. My whole face could puff off. Hmm, maybe make it one of your special skills. You know, so knocking someone out is also a special skill. Right, bye Vanessa, thanks. Vanessa, next week, yogurt night? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, can, you know, whatever. <laughs> you could put carrot chips on there. Bye. Supposed to be less cal calories or something. Bye. I gotta say something. She saved my life. I gotta say something. <sighs> Alright, here it goes. What would I say? I could really get in trouble. It's a bee law. You're not supposed to, to talk to, to a human. <sighs> I can't believe I'm doing this. I've got to. Oh, I can't do it. Come on. No. Yes. No. Do it. I can't. How should I start it? You like jazz? No, that's no good. Here she comes. Speak, you fool! Um, hi. I'm sorry. <gasps> You're talking! Yes, I know. I know. I'm so sorry. You're talking! I know. I'm, I'm, I'm so... I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. It's fine. It's just... I know I'm dreaming, but I don't recall going to bed. Well, you know, I'm sure this is very disconcerting. Yeah, I mean, this is a bit of a surprise to me. I mean... You're a bee, yeah, 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 I am a bee, and uh, you know, I'm not supposed to be doing this, but... Oh, huh? They were trying to kill me, and if it wasn't for you, I mean, I had to thank you, it's, it's just the way I was raised. And Vanessa grabs a fork and stabs herself in the hand, then cries out. Oh, that was a little weird. I'm talking to a bee, yeah. I'm talking to a bee! Anyway, and the bee is talking to me! Um, I just want to say I'm grateful and I'm going to leave now. Wait, 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 wait. How did you learn to do that? What? The, 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 the talking thing. Oh, same way you did, I guess. Mama, Gada, honey, you pick it up. <laughs> That's very funny. Yeah, bees are funny. If we didn't laugh, we'd cry with what we have to deal with. Anyway. Can I, uh, get you something? Like what? I don't know, I mean, I don't know, coffee? Well, uh, I don't know. I don't want to put you out unless you're making it anyway. Oh, it's no trouble. I oh, it takes two minutes. Really, it's just coffee. I hate to impose. Don't be ridiculous. Actually, I would love a cup. Hey, you want a little rum cake? I really shouldn't. Have a little rum cake. No, no, no. I can't. Oh, come on. You know I'm trying to lose a couple micrograms here. Where? Well, these stripes don't help. You look great. <laughs> I don't know if you know anything about fashion. <laughs> Vanessa walks away and begins pouring a cup of coffee onto the floor. <laughs> Are you alright? No. <laughs> He's making the tie in the cab as they're flying up Madison. So he finally gets there. Uh huh. He runs up the steps into the church. The wedding is on. Yeah. And he says, Watermelon? I thought you said Guatemelon. Uh huh. Why would I marry a watermelon? <laughs> Oh, is that a B joke? Yeah, that's the kind of stuff that we do. Yeah, different. So anyway, what are you gonna do, Barry? 
About work? I don't know. I want to do my part in the hive. But I, I can't do it the way they want. I know how you feel. You do? Sure. My parents wanted me to be a lawyer or a doctor, but I wanted to be a florist. Really? My only interest is flowers. Our new queen was just elected with that same campaign slogan. No, oh, huh. Anyway, you see, if you look there, there's my hive right there. You can see it. Oh, you're in Sheep Meadow. Yes, you know, the turtle pond. Yes. <laughs> yes? I'm right off of that. Oh, no way. I know that area. <laughs> you know, lots of tower right there. Uh, towering right? <laughs> towering there once. Then behind them, a janitor comes. Really? Yes. Why do girls put rings on their toes? Well, why not? I don't know. It's like putting a hat on your knee. Maybe I'll try that. You all right, ma'am? Oh, yeah, fine. Just having two cups of coffee. <laughs> Vanessa and Barry share a little quiet time. Anyway, this has been great. Thanks for the coffee. Oh, yeah, it's no trouble. Sorry I couldn't finish it. If I did, I'd be up for the rest of my life. Are you? Um, can I take a piece of this with me? Sure. Here, have a crumb. Oh, thanks. Yeah. All right. Well then, I guess I'll see you around or not or. <gasps> okay, Barry. And thank you so much again for before. Oh, Dad. That was nothing. Well, not nothing. But anyway. <laughs> Barry extends his hand. Vanessa touches it with her finger, and they gingerly shake. The janitor looks over and continues tightening the bulb in the socket. It shorts, causing him to lose his balance and fall backwards. And then the next day at the Hanex building. This can't possibly work. Well, he's all set to go. We may as well try it. Okay, they pull the chute. They... Sounds amazing. Oh, it was amazing. It, it was the scariest. Happiness, happiest moment of my life. Humans. Humans. I can't believe you were with humans. Giant, scary humans. What were they like? Huge and scary, huge and crazy. They talk crazy. They eat crazy giant things. They drive around real crazy. And do they try? And do they try and kill you like on TV? Some of them, but some of them don't. How'd you get back, Poodle? Look, you did it, and I'm glad. You saw whatever you wanted to see out there. You had your experience, and now you're back. You can pick out your job, and everything can be normal. Well, 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 well. Well, I met someone. You met someone? Was she bee-ish? Hmm. Not a wasp. Your parents will kill you. No, 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 not a wasp. Spider? You know, I'm not attracted to the spiders. I know to everyone else it's like the hottest thing with the eight legs and all. I can't get by that face. Hmm. So, uh, who is she? She's a... a human. Oh, no, 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 no. That didn't happen. You didn't do that. That is a bee law. You wouldn't break a bee law. Her name's Vanessa. Oh, oh boy, she's so nice. And she's a florist. Oh no, 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 you're dating a human florist? Well, we're not dating. You're flying outside the hive. You're talking to human beings that attack our homes with power washes and M80s. That's one eighth of a stick of dynamite. She saved my life. And she understands me. This is over. Eat this. This is not over. What was that? They call it a crumb. That was so stinging, stripey, and that's not even what they eat. That just falls off what they eat. Do you know what a cinnamon is? No, it's bread. Come in here and cinnamon. Be quiet and frosting. They heat it up. They heat it up. Sit down. Really hot. Listen to me. We are not them. We're us. There's us and there's them. Yes, but who can deny the heart that is yearning? There's no yearning. Stop yearning. Listen to me. You have got to start thinking B, my friend. Thinking B. Thinking B. Thinking B. Thinking B. Thinking B. <laughs> there he is. He's in the pool. You know what your problem is, Barry? I gotta start thinking B. Barry, how much longer is this going to go on? It's been three days. I don't understand why you're not working. Well, I've got a lot of big life decisions I'm thinking about. What life? You have no life. You have no job. You're barely a B. Ugh. Would it kill you to just make a little honey? Barry, come out from under there. Your, fa your father's talking to you. Martin, would you talk to him? Barry, I'm talking to you. 
Bear keeps swimming downward to the honey which clears and leads him to a park where Vanessa is waiting for him, reclining on a picnic basket. Sugar Sugar by the Archies is playing in the background. She swats a mosquito that lands on her head on her leg, then looks at Barry for his reaction. Both are surprised but then laugh about it. You coming? <laughs> Got everything? All set. She gets into a one-man ultralight plane with a black and yellow paint job and puts on her helmet. She and the plane are now very sized. You go ahead, I'll catch up. Don't be too long. <laughs> The plane takes off, Barry soon catches up and they and they fly together. Watch this! The plane does a loop and trailing red smoke that forms a heart and crashes into the side of a rock pile bursting into flames. Vanessa! Barry breaks the surface of the pool gasping for air. We're still here, Barry. I told you not to yell at him. He doesn't respond when you yell at him. Then why are you yelling at me? Because you don't listen! Ah, I'm not listening to this. Dries himself and puts on his sweater. Sorry, Mom, I've gotta go. Where are you going? Nowhere. I'm meeting a friend. A girl? Is this why you can't decide? Bye. Hold on. I just hope she's B-ish. Vanessa exits her florist shop, flipping the sign over and locking the door. He see the Tournament of Roses parade poster. So they have a huge parade of just flowers every year in Pasadena? Oh, to be in the Tournament of Roses, that's every florist's dream. Up on a float, surrounded by flowers, crowds, cheering. Wow, a tournament. Do the roses actually complete in a, com compete in athletic events? No. Alright, I've got one. How come you don't fly anywhere? It's exhausting. Hmm. Why don't you run everywhere? Is that fast? Isn't that faster? Yeah, okay, I see, I see. Alright, your turn. Ah, Devo. You can't ju you can just freeze live TV? That's insane. What, you don't have anything like that? We have Hive. Right? <laughs> we have Hivo, but it's a disease. It's a horrible, horrible disease. Oh my. They turn a corner into onto a busier street, people start swatting at Barry. <laughs> Dumb bees. You must just want to. Sting all those jerks. We really try not to sting. It's usually fatal for us. So you really have to watch your temper? They enter a supermarket. Oh yeah, very carefully. You kick a wall, take a walk, write an angry letter and throw it out. You work it through like it like any emotion. Anger, jealousy, lust. Barry lands on a cardboard boxes in the aisle, a stock a stock boy hits him with a rolled up advertises advertisement. Oh my goodness, Barry! Barry, are you okay? Yeah. Who? What is wrong with you? It's a bug. Well, he's not bothering anybody. Get out of here, you creep. She slaps him with the advertisement and he leaves, muttering. Shakes off the hit. Barry shakes off the hit. What was that? A pick and save circular? Yeah, it was. How did you know? Felt like about 10 pages. 75 is pretty much our limit. Boy, you really got that. You really got that down to a science. Oh, we have to. I lost a cousin to Italian Vogue. I'll bet. He stops when he sees the row of honey jars. What in the name of mighty Hercules is this? How did this get here? Cute bee. Golden Blossom. Ray Liotta Private Select. Isn't he that actor? I never heard of him. Why is this here? For people. We eat it. Why? He gestures around the market. You don't have enough food on your own? Well, yes, we... How do you even get it? Well, please make it. I know who makes it. And it's hard to make it. There's heating and cooling and stirring. You need a whole Krellman thing. It's organic. It's our organic. It's just honey, Barry. Just what? Bees don't know about this. This is stealing. <laughs> this is stealing. A lot of stealing. You've taken our homes, our schools, our hospitals. This is all we have. And it's on sale? I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I'm going to get to the bottom of all of this. Ba Barry rips off the label from a jar of Ray Liotta Private Select Honey. Later, Barry's infiltrating the supermarket loading dock by covering up his yellow stripes with a magic marker and putting on war paint. And putting on war paint. Hector's opening more boxes of honey jars. 
Hey Hector, you almost done? Almost. Barry steps in some honey. Hector stops and turns. He is here. I sense it. He grabs his box cutter as Barry hides. Barry hides behind the box again, talking loud to the open room as he opens a jar of honey from a box. Well, I guess I'll go home now and just leave this nice honey out. And leave this nice honey out with no one around, pretends to walk away. Barry steps out into the light. You're busted, box boy. Aha! <laughs> I knew I heard something, so you can't talk. Barry flies at him, stinger first backing him against the wall. Hector drops the knife. Oh, I can't talk. And now you're going to start talking. Where are you getting all the sweet stuff? Who's your supplier? I don't know what you're talking about. I thought we were all friends. The last thing we want to do is, is upset any of you bees. Okay. <laughs> Hector grabs a pushpin. Barry begins fencing with his stinger. Ha! You're too late. It's ours now. You, sir, have crossed the wrong sword. You, sir, are about to... <laughs> you, sir, are about to be launched for, for my iguana, Ignacio. The fight continues. They cross swords and get nose to nose. Where's the honey coming from? Barry knocks the pushpin away and put his stinger up to Hector's nose. Tell me where! Points to a truck. Honey. <laughs> Hector points to a truck. Honey farms! It comes from honey farms! Okay. Barry flies after the departing truck, dodging a bus, taxis, and a messenger on a bicycle. One driver yells at a messenger, Crazy person! <laughs> Barry continues his pursuit, using the elastic strap on a bicycle messenger's helmet to launch himself towards the truck. He lands on the windshield, pressed against it by the wind. He sees, he sees himself surrounded by dead bugs. Then works his way around them. Oh my, what horrible thing has happened here? Look at these faces, they never knew what hit them. And now they're on the road to nowhere. A mosquito opens his eyes. Psst, just keep still. What, you're not dead? Do I look dead? Hey man, they will wipe anything that moves. Now where are you headed? To honey, to honey farms. I'm onto something huge here. I'm going to Alaska. Moose blood, crazy stuff, blows your head off. I'm going to talk. I'm going to Tacoma. What about you? He really is dead. All right. The driver's hand moved to the windshield wiper lever. Uh oh. What is that? Oh no! It's a wiper. Triple blade. Triple blade. Jump on. It's your only chance, B. They hang on to the wiper as it moves back and forth. Moose blood yells at the driver through the glass. Why does everything have to be so doggone clean? How much do you people need to see? Open your eyes! Stick your head out the window! Inside the cab, the radio's playing. For NPR News in Washington, I'm Carl Castle. But don't kill no more bugs! He is flung off the wiper as the washer fluid sprays onto the windshield. B! Moose blood guy! Barry gets flung off, grabs a hold of the radio antenna, a cricket flying. By grabs all the of the antenna. Both scream. Both bugs are screaming. You hear something? Like what? Like tiny screaming. Turn off the radio. The driver turns off the radio and the antenna retracts. As it lowers, the cricket and Barry work their way to its stop. Barry wins and the cricket has to let go. But then so does Barry, and he's sucked into the air horn on top of the truck. Hey, what's up, B-boy? Hey, blood. Inside the truck horn later during the drive. And it was just an endless row of honey jars as far as the eye could see. Wow. So I'm just assuming wherever this truck goes, that's where they're getting it. I mean, that honey's ours. Bees hang tight. Well, we're all jammed in there. It's a close community. Not us, man. We're on our own. Every every mosquito is on his own. But what if you uh, but what if you get in trouble? Trouble? You're a mosquito. You're in trouble. Nobody likes us. They're all just smacking. People see, a mos people see a mosquito. Smack, smack, smack. At least you're out in the world. You must meet a lot of girls. Mosquito girls try to trade up. Get with a moth, dragonfly. Mosquito girl don't want no mosquito. Oh my god. <laughs> they, 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 mosquitoes are color coded. It, I, hope, I hope I'm not wrong. A blood mobile passes them. Whoa, you have got to be kidding me. Moose Blood's about to leave the building. So long, B. He leaves and jumps onto the other vehicle, saying to the bugs on its windshield. Hey guy hey guys, I knew I'd catch you all down here. 
Did you bring your crazy trucks? At Honey Farms, the trucks, the truck stops. Barry flies out of the horn and lands on the nose of the nose of the truck. Two beekeepers walk around the back side of the gift shop. Barry follows, landing in a tree. Then we throw it in some charms, slap a label on it. It's pretty much profit, pure profit. What is this place? My bees got a brain the size of a pinhead. They are pinheads. Ha ha ha! Both laugh and Elmo says, "Pinhead Freddy opens a smoker box after they arrive." Hey, check out the new smoker! Oh, sweet! That's the one you want. The Thomas Three Thousand smoker. Ninety puffs a minute, semi-automatic. Twice the nicotine, all the all the tar. Both laugh again. Couple of breaths of this knocks them right out. They make the honey, and we make the money. They make the honey, and we make the money. Freddy and Elmo walk onward. Freddy opens an apiary box and sprays it op- sprays it with smoke. Inside the bee- inside the bees start moaning and gasping. Oh my! Barry flies into the open box as Freddy leaves and makes his way into an apartment. Two bees are just waking up. What's going on? Are you okay? Yeah, it doesn't last long. How did you two get here? Do you know you're in a fake hive with fake walls? Points to a picture. Our queen was moved here. We had no choice. This is your queen? That's a man in woman's clothes. That's a drag queen. The walls separating the, apart- the apartments are removing, revealing hundreds of them. What is this? Flies through the apartments and out into the open air. He hovers high above a tree where he sees even more apiary boxes on the farm. He begins taking pictures. Oh no. There's hundreds of them. Bee honey, our honey, is being brazenly stolen on a massive scale. This is worse than anything the bears have done to us. And I intend to do something about it. Oh, Barry, stop. Who told you that humans are taking our honey? That's just a rumor. Do these look like humors? Rumors? Barry throws his pictures on the table. That's a conspiracy. That's a conspiracy theory. These are obviously doctored photos. Ugh. Barry, how did you get mixed up in all of this? Because he's been talking to humans. What? <laughs> talking to humans? He has a human girlfriend. Oh, Barry. And they make out. Make out? Barry! We do not. You wish you could. Whose side are you on? The bees. I did it a cricket once in San Antonio. Man, those crazy legs kept me up all night. Who you are? <laughs> Barry, this is what you want to do with your life? This is what I want to do for all our lives. Nobody works harder than bees. Dad, I remember you coming home some night so overworked. You, your hands were still stirring. You couldn't stop them. Ah, I remember that. What right do they have to our hard-earned ma- honey? <laughs> we're living on two cups a year. They're putting it in a lip balm for no reason whatsoever. Even if it's true, Barry, what could one bee do? I'm going to sting them where it really hurts. In the face. No. In the eye, that would really hurt. No. Up the nose, that's a killer. <laughs> no. There's only one place you can sting the humans. One place where it really matters. The scene cuts to the title sequence of the Hive at Five program. The title sequence shows news events covered in the past. A pollen jock coming in for a crash land- landing with a stinger that's on fire. A protest about bee, b- bee beards and a bear destroying a hive. Next are the newscasters. Hive at Five. The hive's only full, full. <laughs> the hive's only full R action news source, with Bob Bumble at the anchor desk. Weather with Storm Stinger, sports with Buzz Larvey, and Janet Chung. Good evening. I'm Bob. Bu- I'm Bob Bumble. And I'm Janet Chung. Our top story: A Tri County Bee, Barry Benson, is saying he intends to sue the human race for stealing our honey, packaging it, and profiting from it legally. Broadcast shifts again to another studio in the B, in the building of in the building for B Larry King live. Don't forget tomorrow night on B Larry King, we're gonna have three former queens all right here in our studio, discussing their new book Classy Ladies, out this week on Hexagon. Tonight we're talking with B with Barry Benson. Did you ever think I'm just a kid from the hive? I can't do this, Larry. Bees have never been afraid to change the world. 
I mean, what about B. Columbus? B. Gandhi? B. Jesus? Well, where I'm from, you wouldn't think of suing humans. We're thinking more like stickball, candy stores. How old are you? Well, I want you to know that the entire bee community is supporting you in this case, which is certain to be the trial of the bee century. Thank you, Larry. You know, they have a Larry King in the human world, too. It's a common name. Next week on B. Larry King. No, I mean he looks like you and he has a show with suspenders and different colored dots behind him. Next week on B. Larry King. Old guys, old guy glasses, and there's coats along the bottom from the guests where you, <laughs> from the guests you're watching, even though you just heard them. Bear next week. They're scary. They're hairy, and they're here lives. <laughs> he exits. Always leans forward, pointy shoulders, squinty eyes. Very Jewish. Rest in peace, Larry King. Nighttime at Vanessa's flower shop. Law books and legal forms are piled up. Look in. In tennis. You're tank at the point of weakness. But it was my grandmother, Ken. She's 81. Huh. Honey, her backhand's a... Huh. Honey, her backhand's a joke. I'm not going to take advantage of that. Quiet, please. Actual work going on here. Is that the same, B? Yes, it is. I'm helping him sue the human race. What? Barry enters room C-scan. Oh, hello. Hello, B. This is Ken. Yeah, I remember you. Timberland. Size ten and a half. Bribram Soul, I believe. Why does he talk again, hon? Listen, you better go. We're really busy working. But it's our yogurt night. She pushes him out the door. Oh, bye-bye. <laughs> Why is yogurt night so difficult? Oh, you poor thing. You two have been at this for hours. Yes, and Adam here has been huge help. Adam is asleep inside an empty cinnamon box, covered in frosting and muttering in his sleep about it. How many sugars? Just one. I try not to use the competition. Ooh. So why are you helping me anyway? Bees have good qualities. Si, certo. And it feels good to take my mind off the shop. I don't know why. Instead of flowers, people are giving balloon bouquets now. Yeah, those are ga those are great if you're tree and artificial and artificial flowers. Oh, those just get me psychotic. Yeah, me too. The bent stingers, the pointless pollination. Bees must hate those fake plastic things. There's nothing worse than a daffodil that's a that's had work done. Well, maybe this could make up for it a little bit. They exit the flower shop and go to the mailbox. You know, Barry, this lawsuit is a pretty big deal. I guess. Are you sure that you want to go through with it? Am I sure? When I'm done with the humans, they won't be able to say, Honey, I'm home, without paying a royalty. Outside the courthouse, a reporter begins her segment talking to the camera. Sarah, it's an incredible scene here in downtown Manhattan where all eyes and ears of the world are anxiously waiting because for the first time in history, we're going to hear for ourselves if a honeybee can actually speak. Inside, Barry, Vanessa, and Adam sit at a table. What have we gotten into here, Barry? I don't know, but it's pretty big, isn't it? I can't believe how many humans don't have to be at work during the day. Hey, you think these billion-dollar multinational food companies have good lawyers? Back outside the courthouse, a policeman announces through a megaphone. Folks, everybody needs to sit behind the barricade. A very expensive car drives up with a license plate saying, Alibi. Oh, I get it. And then initials LTM on the hood ornament. The lawyer gets out, sees a bug, and steps on it. Inside, Barry shudders. What's the matter? I don't know. I just gotta chill. Well, if it isn't the B team, waves a honey packet. <laughs> waves a honey packet he picked up from the saucer holding his drink. Any of you boys work on this? He chuckles. All rise. The Honorable Judge Bumbleton presiding. All right, case number 4475, Superior Court of New York. Barry B. Verson versus the honey industry is now in session. Mr. Montgomery, you're representing the five major food companies collectively. A privilege. Ah, Mr. Benson, you are representing all bees of the world? Inside and outside the courtroom, everyone is waiting to hear what he will say. 
I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yes, Your Honor, we're ready to proceed. And Mr. Montgomery, your opening statement, please. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my grandmother was a simple woman, born on a farm. She believed it was a man's divine right to benefit from the bounty of nature God put before us. If we were to live in the topsy-turvy world Mr. Benson imagines, j just think of what it would mean. Maybe I would have to negotiate with the silkworm for the elastic in my britches. Talking bee. How do we know this isn't some sort of holographic motion picture capture Hollywood wizardry? They could be late. <laughs> They could be using laser beams, robotics, ventriloquism, cloning. For all we know, he could be on steroids. Mr. Benson? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, there's no trickery here. I'm just an ordinary bee. And as a bee, honey's pretty important to me. It's important to all bees. We invented it, we make it, and we protect it with our lives. Unfortunately, there are some people in this room who think they can take whatever they want from us because we're the little guys. And what I'm hoping is that after this is all over, you'll see how by taking our honey, you're not only taking away everything we have, but everything we are. Vanessa smiles and silently claps and the bees in the courtroom are moved by his words. Back at their house, Barry's parents are watching on TV. Oh, I wish he would dress like that all the time. So nice. <clears throat> oh my god. Okay, four to six minutes in. Let's go. Call your first witness. So, Mr. Klaus von der Hayden of Honey Farms. Pretty big company you have there. I suppose so. And I see you also own Honey Burton. And Hot Run! Yes, they provide beekeepers for our farms. Beekeeper. I find that to be a very disturbing term, I have to say. I don't imagine you employ any bee freers, do you? Uh, no, no. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you? No. No, because you don't free bees. You keep bees. And not only that, it seems you thought a bear would be an appropriate image for a jar of honey. Well, they're a lovable creature. Uh, Yogi Bear, Frosty Bear, uh, Build a Bear? Yeah, you mean like this. Vanessa and a man enter, <laughs> guiding a giant grizzly bear restrained by a collar with chains attached to both sides. They bring him in front of Van der Heiden. The bear lunges at him and roars, Bears kill bees! How would you like his big hairy head crashing through your living room, biting into your couch, spitting out your throat pillow pillars? Rar, rar, rar. Okay, that's enough. Take him away. <laughs> Vincent, Vincent stops roaring. He and the man depart without incident, leaving Van der Heide and trembling with the judge glaring at him and Leighton angrily growling himself. Later, Barry questions another witness. So, Mr. Sting, thank you for being here. Your name intrigues me, I have to say. Where have I heard it before? Uh, I was with a band called the police. But you've never been a police officer of any kind, have you? Uh, no, I haven't. No, you haven't. And so here we are. And so here we have yet another example of bee culture being casually stolen by human for nothing more than a prance about stage name. Oh, please. Have you ever been stung, Mr. Sting? Because I'm feeling a little stung. Sting? Or should I say... Mr. Gordon M. Sumner, the jury gasps. To his late to his assistants, that's not his real name. You idiots! <laughs> Later on, Barry question Barry is questioning another witness, reading from the base of the statue the witness is holding. Mr. Leora, first may I offer my belated congratulations on your Emmy win for a guest spot on ER in two thousand five. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I can't laugh that maniacally. I also see from your resume that you're devilishly handsome, but with a churning inner turmoil that's always ready to blow. I enjoy what I do. Is that a crime? Not yet it isn't. But is this what it's come for you, Mr. Leora? Exploiting tiny helpless bees so you don't have to rehearse your part and learn your lines, sir? Watch it, Benson. I could blow you right now. I could bl <laughs> I could blow right now. This isn't a good fella. This is a bad fella. Suddenly upset, he tries to smash Barry with his hemi statue. Why doesn't someone just tap on this little creep and we can all go home? You're all thinking it. Say it. Order. Order in this courtroom. Order, I say. Mr. Leoto, please sit down. 
The reaction from the press is harsh. The headline of the New York Telegram has, Sue B. The New York Post reads, Bees to humans, buzz off. And the Daily Variety reports, Studio Dom's Leora Project slams door on unlawful entry to. That evening in Vanessa's apartment. Well, I just think that was awfully nice of that bear to pitch in like that. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I think the jury is on our side. Are we doing everything right, you know, legally? I'm a florist. Right, right. He raises his glass. Well, here's to a great theme. To a great theme. Both Toast and Ken. Both Toast and Ken enters the apartment. Well, hello. Oh. Oh, Ken! Hello. Oh, I didn't think you were coming. No, I was just late. I tried to call, but... The battery. I didn't want all this to go to waste, so I called Barry. Luckily, he was free. Yeah. Oh, that was lucky. Well, there's still a little left. I could heat it up. Yeah, heat it up. Sure, whatever. So, I hear you're quite a tennis player. I'm not much for the game myself. I find the ball a little grabby. That's where I usually sit. Right there. From the kitchen. Ken, Barry was looking at your resume, and he agreed with me that eating with chopsticks isn't really a special skill. You think I don't see what you're doing? Hey, look, I know how hard it is trying to find the right job. We certainly have that in common. Do we? Well, bees have 100% employment, of course. But we do jobs like taking the crud out. That's just what I was thinking about doing. Ken reaches for a knife but pushes it off the table. He bends down to pick it up. Ken, I let Barry borrow your razor for his bus. I hope that was alright. Ken hit his head on the table as he straightened back up. Then presses the apple cider bottle against his temple to soothe it. <clears throat> I'm gonna go drain the old stinger. Yeah, you do that. Barry flies a couple of loops in front of Ken as he heads to the bathroom, causing Ken, Ken to shake the bottle and get the cider in his eyes. Barry grabs a small section of Variety magazine as he goes. Yeah, look at that. Tars up a small corner of Variety magazine as he goes in. As Barry finishes up and washes his hands, Ken enter carrying um, Ken enters carrying a la large magazine. <laughs> you, you know, I've just had it about had it with your little mind games. What's that? Italian bow Vogue. He curls the magazine tight. Mamma mia, that's a lot of pages. It's a lot of ads. Remember what Van said. Why is your life any more valuable than mine? That's funny, I just can't seem to recall that. He whacks Barry with the magazine. He misses and knocks everything off the vanity. He grabs a can of air freshener. I think something stinks in here. He sprays at Barry. I love the smell of flowers. Yeah? How do you like the smell of flames? He lights the stream. Not as much. Barry screams. Ah! Barry flies in a circle, Ken trying to stay with him, spins in place. There are flames outside the bathroom door. Ken slips on the entire and Vogue falls backward into the shower, pulling down the shower curtain. The can hits him in the head, followed by the shower curtain rod and the rubber duck. Ken reaches back, grabs the handled, handheld shower head. He whips around looking for Barry. There's a water bug near the drain. Water bug, not taking sides. Barry is on the toilet tank. He comes out from behind the shampoo bottle wearing a child's stick cap as a helmet. Ken, look at me. I'm wearing a chapstick hat. This is pathetic. Ken is turning the hand shower nozzle from gentle to turbo to little. I've got issues. Ken fires the water at Barry, knocking him into the toilet. The items from the vanity, a mori board, lipstick, eye curler, etc. are on the toilet seat. Ken looks down at Barry. Well, well, well. A royal flush. You're bluffing. Am I? Surf's up, dude. Ah, oh, poo water. That bowl is gnarly. Except for those dirty yellow rings. Kenneth, what are you doing? You know what? I don't even like honey. I don't eat it. We need to talk. <laughs> He's just a little bee. And he happens to be the nicest bee I've met in a long, long time. Long time? What are you talking about? Are there other bugs in your life? No, but there are other things bugging me in life, and you're one of them. Fine. Talking bees, no yogurt knife, my ner- Knife. No yogurt knife, my nerves are fried from riding on this emotional roller coaster. Goodbye, Ken. Ah! Phew. Ken exits and re-enters the painting. 
And for your information, I prefer sugar-free artificial sweeteners made by man. I'm sorry about all that. Then Ken re-enters again. I know it's got an aftertaste. I like it! I always felt there was some kind of barrier between Ken and me. I couldn't overcome it. Oh well. Are you going to be okay for the trial tomorrow? Oh, I believe Mr. Montgomery is about out of ideas. We would like to call Mr. Barry, ba ben <laughs> Mr. Barry Benson B to the stand. Now that's a good idea. You can really see why he's considered one of the very best lawyers. Yeah. Hold on. We're 55 minutes in. Leighton, you've got to weave some magic. With this, you've got to weave some magic with this jury. It's all. It's gonna be all over. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Camel. The only thing I have to do to turn this jury around is to remind them of what they don't like about bees. You got the tweezers? Are you allergic? Only to losing, son. Only to losing. Mr. Benson B, I'll ask you what I think we'd all like to know. What exactly is your relationship to that woman? We're friends. Good friends? Yes. How good? What? Do you live together? Wait a minute, this isn't about, are you her little bed bug? Hey, that's not the kind of, I've seen a bee documentary or two. Now from what I understand, doesn't your queen give birth to all the bee children in the hive? Yeah, but, so those aren't even your real parents. Oh, Barry. Yes, they are. Hold me back. You're an illegitimate bee, aren't you, Benson? He's denouncing bees. And don't y'all date your cousins? Objection! I'm going to pincushion this guy. Adam, don't! It's what he wants! Oh! Oh, I'm hit! Oh, lordy, I'm hit! Order, order, please! The venom! The venom is coursing through my veins! Mr. Montgomery, I have been felled by a winged beast of destruction, you see? You can't treat them like equals. They're strife savages. Stinging's the only thing they know. It's their way! Adam, stay with me. I can't feel my legs. Take it easy. Oh, what angel of mercy will come forward to suck the poison from my... <laughs> oh, what angel of mercy will come forward to suck the poison from my heaving buttocks? Please, I, I will have order in this court. Order, order, please. The case of the honeybees versus the human race took a pointed turn. Against the bees yesterday. What are there? Thank you. Legal team stung late on team Montgomery. Now here's on with a five day. Hey buddy, hey. Is there much pain? Yeah, I I blew the case, didn't I? Doesn't matter. The important thing is you're alive. You could have died. I'd be better off dead. Look at me. They got it from the cafeteria, they got it from downstairs in a tuna sa They got it from the cafeteria. They got it from downstairs in a tuna sandwich. Look, there's a little celery. There's still a little celery on it. Celery, whatever. What was that like to sting someone? I can't explain it. It was all, all adrenaline and then, and then ecstasy. All right. You think that was all a trap? Of course. I'm sorry. I flew us right into this. Hold on. I can't see who's talking now. Sorry for the... Oh, wow, there's really nothing. Where am I? You think that was all a trap? Of course, I'm sorry. I flew us right into this. What were we thinking? Look at us. We're just a couple of bugs in this world. What do you think the humans will do to us if they win? I don't know. Every day put the roaches in motels. That doesn't sound so bad. Adam, they check in, but they don't check out. Oh my. Say, could you get a nurse to close that window? Why? The smoke. Bees don't smoke. Right. Bees don't smoke. Bees don't smoke. But some bees are smoking. Adam, that's it. That's our case. It is? It's not over? No, get up and get dressed. I've got to go somewhere. You get back to the court and stall. Stall any way you can. 
And assuming you've done, <laughs> okay, this is the. And assuming you've done step twenty nine correctly, you're ready for the tub. Mr. Flamen, yes, yes, your honor. Where is the rest of your team? Well, your honor, it's interesting. You know, bees are trained to fly kind of haphazardly, and as we're told quite often, we don't make very good time. I actually once heard a pretty funny story about a bee. Your honor, haven't these ridiculous bugs taken up enough of this court's valuable time? How much longer are we going to allow these absurd shenanigans to go on? They have presented no compelling evidence to support their charges against my clients, who have all run perfectly legitimate businesses. I move for a complete dismissal of this entire case. Mr. Flayman, I'm afraid I'm going to have to consider Mr. Montgomery's motion. But you can't. We have a terrific case. Where is your proof? Where is the evidence? Show me the smoking gun. Sorry, I have not talked <laughs> for one hour straight for... I should have I should have probably done warm up warm up. Hold it, your honor. You want a smoking gun? Here is your smoking gun. What is that? It's a bee smoker. What's this? This harmless little contraption? This couldn't hurt a fly, let alone a bee. Members of the jury, look at what has happened to bees who have never been asked. Smoking or none. Is this what nature intended for us? To be forcibly addicted to these smoke machines in man-made wooden slat work camps? Living out our lives as honey slaves to the white man? What are we going to do? He's playing the species card. Ladies and gentlemen, please! Free these bees! Free the 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 bees! Free the, bees. the court finds in favor of the bees! Wait, no, that's not how it goes. The court finds in favor of the bees. <laughs> Vanessa, we won. Yay, I know you can do it. High five. Sorry. I'm okay. Vanessa, do you know what this means? All the honey is finally going to belong to the bees. Now we won't have to work so hard all the time. This is an unholy perversion of the balance of nature, Vincent. You'll regret this. Barry, how much of... How much honey do you think is out there? Alright, alright, one at a time. Barry, who are you wearing? My sweater is La Ralph Lauren, and I have no pants. What if Montgomery is right? What do you mean? We've been living the bee way a long time. 27 million years. Congratulations on your victory. What, what, are, you, what are your demands as a settlement? First, we're going to demand a complete shutdown of all bee work camps. Then, we want... We want back the honey that was ours to begin with. Every last drop. We demand an end to the glorification of the bear as anything more than a filthy, smelly, big-headed, bad bread stink machine. I believe we're all aware of what they do in the woods. Wait for my signal. Take him out. He'll have no share for a few hours, then he'll be fine. And we will no longer tolerate B negative nicknames. But it's just a prance about stage name. Duh. Unnecessary inclusion of honey and bogus health products and la di da human tea time snack garnishments. Can't breathe! Bring it in, boys. Hold it right there. Good. Tap it. Mr. Buswell, we just passed three cups and there's gallons more coming. I think we need to shut down. Shut down? We never shut down. Shut down, honey production! Stop making honey! Turn your key, sir. What do we do now? Cannonball! We're shutting down honey production. Mission abort. Aborting pollination and nectar detail. Returning to base. Okay, and this is where the montage and uh, there's a lot of flowers dying. Okay. Adam, you wouldn't believe how much honey was out there. Oh, yeah? What's going on around here? Where is everybody? Are they out celebrating? No, they're just home. They don't know what to do. They're laying out. They're sleeping in. I heard your Uncle Carl was on his way to San Antonio with a cricket. At least we got our honey back. Yeah, but sometimes I think... So what if humans like our honey? Who wouldn't? It's the greatest thing in the world. I was excited to be part of making it. This was my new desk. This was my new job. I went to do it really well, and now... 
And now I can't. And then the Barry looks at the hive, everything's just still. I don't understand why they're not happy. We have so much now. I thought their lives would be better. They're doing nothing. It's amazing. Honey really changes people. You don't have any idea what's going on, do you? What do you want to show me? This. Barry sees that all the flowers are wilting, all that stuff. What happened here? This is not the half of it. Oh no. Oh my. They're all wilting. Doesn't look very good, does it? No. And whose fault do you think that is? You know, I'm gonna guess bees. Bees. Huh? Specifically me. I didn't think that bees not needing to make honey would affect all these other things. And it's not just that. And it's not just flowers. Fruits, vegetables, they all need bees. Well, that's our whole SAT test right there. So you take away the produce that affects the entire animal kingdom. And then, of course... The human species. <clears throat> so if there's no more pollination, it could all just go south here, couldn't it? And I know this is also partly my fault. How about a suicide pack? How will we do it? I'll sting you, you step on me. That just kills you twice. Right, right. Listen, Barry. Sorry, but I gotta get going. I had to open my mouth and talk. Vanessa? Vanessa, why are you leaving? Where are you going? To the final tournament of roses parade in Pasadena. They'd move it up to this weekend because all the flowers are dying. It's the last chance I'll ever have to see it. Vanessa, I just want to say I'm sorry. I never meant it to turn out like this. I know. Me neither. <laughs> Tournament of Roses. Roses can't do sports. Wait a minute. Roses. 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 Vanessa! Roses! Barry? Roses are flowers! Yes, they are! Flowers! Bees! Pollen! I know! That's why this is the last parade! Maybe not! Could you ask him to slow down? Could you slow down? Barry! Okay, I made a huge mistake. This is a total disaster and it's all my fault. Yes, it kinda is. I ruined the planet and I wanted to help you with your flower shop. Instead, I made it worse. Actually, it completely closed down. Oh, I thought maybe you were remodeling. Nonetheless, I have another idea and it's greater than all my previous great ideas combined. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Alright, here's what I'm thinking. They have the roses, the roses have the pollen. I know every bee, plant, and flower bud in this park. Oh, I spit. All we gotta do is get what, what they've got back. Wait, all we gotta do is get what they've got back here, what we've got. Bees, park, pollen, flowers, repollination across the nation. Alright, Tournament of Roses, Pasadena, California. They've got nothing but flowers, floats, and cotton candy. Security will be tight. I have an idea. Vanessa Bloom, FTD. Official floral business. It's real. Sorry, ma'am. That's a nice brooch, by the way. Thank you. It was a gift. Then once we're inside, we just pick the right float. How about the princess and the pea? Yeah. I could be the princess and... Yes, I think. You could be... I've... <laughs> the pea! Yes, I got it. Sorry I'm late, where should I sit? What are you? I believe I'm the P. The P? It's supposed to be under the mattresses. Not in this fairy tale, sweetheart. I'm going to talk to the marshal. You do that. This whole parade is a fiasco. Let's see what this baby will do. Hey, what are you doing? Then all we do is blend in with traffic without arousing suspicion. And once we're at the airport, there's no stopping us. Stop! Security. Did you and your insect pack your own float? Yes. Has this float been in your possession the entire time? Would you remove your shoes and everything in your pockets? Can you remove your stinger, sir? That's a part of me. I know. Just having some fun. Enjoy your flight. Then if we're lucky, we'll have just enough pollen to do po we'll just have enough pol pollen to do the job. 
Can you believe how lucky we are? We have just a, we have just enough pollen to do the job. I think this is going to work, Vanessa. It's got to work. Attention passengers, this is Captain Scott. I'm afraid we have a bit of bad weather in the New York area. It looks like we're going to be experiencing a couple of hours delay. Barry, these are cut flowers with no water. They'll never make it. I gotta get up there and talk to these guys. Be careful. Hey, can I get some help with the Sky Mall magazine? I'd like to order the talking inflatable nose and ear hair trimmer. Excuse me, Captain, I'm in a real situation here. What do you say, Hal? I didn't say anything. B! No, 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 don't freak out. There's a chance my entire species... What are you doing? Stop! Wait a minute! I'm an attorney! Who's an attorney? Don't move. And then they hit each other and they pass out. Oh, Barry. Good afternoon, passengers. This is your captain speaking. For a Miss Vanessa Bloom in 24B, please report to the cockpit. And please hurry! What happened here? I tried to talk to them, but then there was a dustbuster, a toupee, a life rapid floated, now one's bald, one's in a boat, and they're both unconscious. Is that another bee joke? No! No one's flying the plane! This is JFK Control Tower, Flight 356. What's your status? This is Vanessa Bloom. I'm a florist from New York. Where's the pilot? He's unconscious, and so is the co-pilot. Not good. Is there anyone on board who has flight experience? As a matter of fact, there is. Who's that? Barry Benson. From the Honey Trial? Oh, great. Vanessa, this is nothing more than a big metal bee. It's got giant wings, huge engines. I can't fly a plane. Why not? Isn't John Travolta a pilot? Yes. How hard could it be? Wait a minute, Barry. We're, he we're headed into some lightning. This is Bob Bumble. We have some late breaking news from JFK Airport, where a very suspenseful scene is developing. Barry Benson, fresh off his stunning legal victory, that's Barry, is now attempting to land a plane loaded with people, flowers, and an incapacitated flight crew. Flowers? Well, we have an electrical storm in the area and two individuals at the controls of a jumbo jet with absolutely no flight experience. Just a minute, Mr. Ditchwater. Ditch what the f What is that name? Mr. Ditchwater. There's a honeybee on that plane. Oh, I'm quite familiar with Mr. Benson's work and his no-account compadres. Haven't they done enough damage already? Hold on. Barry's speech is coming. But isn't, but isn't he your only hope right now? Come on, technically a bee shouldn't be able to fly at all. The wings are too small, their bodies are too big. Hey, hold on a second. Haven't we, haven't we heard this a million times? The surface area of the wings and body mass doesn't make sense. Get this on the air. You got it. Stand by, we're going live. Mr. Ditchwat <laughs> Mr. Ditchwater, the way we work may be a mystery to you. Because making honey takes a lot of bees doing a lot of small jobs. But let me tell you something about a small job. If you do it really well, it makes a big difference. More than we realize. To us, to everyone. That's why I want to get bees back to doing what we do best working together. That's the bee way. We're not made of jello. We get behind the fellow. Black and yellow. Hello. <laughs> Left, right, down, hover. Hover? Forget hover. You know what? This is so hard. Beep, beep. Then lightning strike the plane. Barry, what happened? Wait a minute, I think we were on the pilot the whole time. That may have been helping me. And now we're not. Well, then it turns out I cannot fly a plane. All of you, let's get behind this fellow. Move it out, move out. Our only chance is if I do what I, I would do, and you copy me with the wings of the plane. You don't have to yell. I'm not yelling. We happen to be in a lot of trouble here. It's very hard to concentrate with that panicky tone in your voice. It's not a tone. I'm panicking. I don't think I can do this. Vanessa, pull yourself together. Listen to me. You've got to step out of it. You 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 snap. Hold it. Why? Come on. It's my turn. How's the plane flying? I don't know. Hello? Hey, Benson, have you got any flowers for a happy occasion in there? The pollen jocks! They do get behind a fellow. Black and yellow. Hello. Alright, you two, what do you say we drop this tin can on the blacktop? What blacktop? Where? I can't see anything, can you? No, nothing. It's all cloudy. Come on, you gotta think B, Barry. Thinking B. Thinking B. 
thinking B, thinking B. <laughs> Wait a minute, I think I'm feeling something. What? I don't know, but it's strong and it's pulling me, like a 27 million year old instinct. Bring the nose of the plane down. Thinking B, thinking B, thinking B. What in the world is on that tarmac? Get some lights on that. Get some lights on that. Thinking B, thinking B, thinking B. Vanessa, Vanessa? <laughs> Vanessa, aim for the flower. Okay, out the engines. We're going in on B power. Ready, boys? Affirmative. Good, good, easy now, that's it. Now land on that flower. Ready, boys? Give me full reverse. Spin it around. Not that flower, the other flower. Which flower? That flower. I'm aiming at the flower. <laughs> That's a fat guy in a flowered shirt. I mean a giant black and yellow flower pulsating made of millions of bees. Pull forward, nose down, bring your tail up, rotate around it. This is insane, Barry. This is the only way I know how to fly. Am I cuckoo ka or is that <laughs> or is this plane flying in an insect-like pattern? Get your nose in there. Don't be afraid of it. Smell it. Full reverse. Easy, just drop it. Be a part of it. Aim for the center. Now drop it in. Drop it in, woman. Come on already. Yay, they planted the plane. Barry, we did it. You taught me how to fly. Yes. No high five. Right. Barry, it worked. Did you see the giant flower? What giant flower? Where? Of course I saw the flower. That was genius, man. Genius. Thank you. But we're not done yet. Listen, everyone. This runway is covered with the last pollen from the last flowers available anywhere on Earth. That means this is our last chance. We're the only ones who make honey, pollinate flowers, and dress like this. If we're going to survive as a species, this is our moment. So what do you say? Are we going to be bees? Or just museum of natural history keychains? We're bees! Keychain. Then everyone follow me. Except keychain. Hold on, Barry. Here, you've earned this. Places a pollen jock jacket on Barry and the three pollen jocks cheer while Vanessa give him a thumbs up. Yay! I'm a pollen jock, and it's a perfect fit. All I gotta do are the sleeves. The pollen jocks toss Barry a nectar pack. Oh yeah. That's our Barry! Then here comes the sun play. Here comes the sun, do 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 do. Here comes the sun, and I say it's alright. Mom, the bees are back. If anybody want, needs to make a call, now's the time. I got a feeling we'll be working late tonight. Here shows change. Have a good afternoon. Yes, can I help who's next? Would you like some honey with that? It is bee approved. Don't forget these. Milk, cream, cheese, it's all me. And I don't see a nickel. Sometimes I just feel like a piece of meat. I had no idea. Barry, I'm sorry. Have you got a moment? Would you excuse me? Would you excuse me? My most... <laughs> My mosquito associate will here will be able to help you. Sorry I'm late. He's a lawyer too. I was or ma'am, I was already a blood sucking parasite. All I needed was a briefcase. Have a great afternoon. Barry, I just got a this huge tulip order for a wedding, and I can't get them anywhere. No problem, Vanny. Just leave it to me. They have a nickname. You're a lifesaver, Barry. Can I help who's next? Who's next? Alright, scramble jocks. It's time to fly. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Barry! Can't see a sign that says Vanessa and Barry flowers. Honey legal advice and becomes disgusting. Oh! That bee is living my life! Let it go, Kenny. When will this nightmare end? Let it all go. Beautiful day to fly. Sure is. Between you and me, I was dying to get out of that office. Whoa! -ho -ho! Boom, 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 boom. Um... Okay, I guess that's it. One hour, eighteen, and eighteen. That's faster than I, I than I thought. Uh, six gigabytes of file size. Okay. Um, if you skipped to the end to see if this was all real, that I really did re read all of this, then yeah, sure. Thank you for skipping. I mean, not. Uh, I'm not saying watch the entire thing. But if you didn't watch the entire thing, what is wrong with you? <laughs> you, you, you really decided to spend your time read, <laughs> watching me read the the, the script. Okay. Um. Anyway. 
Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Bye. Uh, bye.